the energy of nuclear reactions. And as we've already mentioned earlier in this chapter, nuclear reactions produce a ton of energy. And whether we've got like a nuclear fission reactor or we've got like nuclear bombs or which could be a fission bomb or a fusion bomb or what's going on at the core of the sun, we have tons and tons of energy being released. And the big thing that's going on here is you actually have mass being converted into energy. And this is one of the big things Einstein talked about in his very famous equation, E equals MC squared. That actually is the equation we're going to use in this lesson because that is the equation that gives you kind of the equivalent of when you convert mass into energy, how much energy it actually comes out to. And it turns out it is a huge amount. Just a teeny bit of mass is converted into a ton of energy, as we'll see in this lesson. Now, this lesson's part of my high school chemistry playlist, and I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so lots and lots of energy being produced here. And Mr. Einstein again gave us that conversion for how to calculate how much E equals MC squared. Well, in this case, we're gonna alter this equation ever so slightly and put a little delta here. And so it's really the change in mass. So we're not gonna actually convert the mass of all of our nuclear reactants into energy. So, but just as we convert these reactants into some products, a little bit of mass is lost. And it's that little bit of mass that's converted into energy. Well, that little bit of mass that's lost, we call delta M, it's called the mass defect. It is the loss in mass. And this is the equation that we will use to convert it into energy. Now, a couple caveats here. So when we do the math here, it turns out we've got to use SI units if we want the energy to come out in joules. And for that to work, it means that your mass here has to be in kilograms. So we'll have to do some converting there because we're gonna look at all these masses individually in atomic mass units, AMUs, and we'll use the conversion that's provided on your handout there that one AMU equals 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms right off the study guide there. So, but you can see here also that we're gonna multiply by C squared. Well, C here is the speed of light. And in SI units, that's gonna be in meters per second. That is 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. 300 million meters per second. And you're gonna square that big old number. And so it turns out that a little bit of mass, by the time you multiply the speed of light squared, turns into a very large amount of energy. And so that's where these nuclear reactions are producing so much energy. It's why they have so much potential to produce energy on a much greater scale than any of our normal chemical reactions might be able to accomplish. It's why, you know, you might have a piece of uranium the size of a softball that can undergo this crazy nuclear reaction you know, and take out city blocks and stuff like this. Well, hopefully not city blocks, but you know what I'm saying. So a huge amount of energy being given off when just a little bit of mass gets converted into energy. All right, so if we take a look here, we're gonna look back at the fission reaction we studied in the last lesson. And so here I've got the exact mass out to five decimal places of everything involved in this fission of uranium-235. So we're gonna bombard it with a neutron, it's gonna produce barium-142, krypton-91, and three neutrons. And with the exact mass in AMUs of all these particles, we can figure out what that mass defect is, and then we'll use this to calculate how much energy that works out to be. All right, so if we start adding some things up, and I would whip out that calculator because you're gonna need it here. So if we add up uranium-235 at 235.04393 and the neutron at 1.00866, we are gonna get a mass, total mass of the reactants of 236.05259 AMUs. And if we do the same thing on the product side, so we're gonna add up 141.91643 plus 90.92345 plus three neutrons. So three times 1.00866. And if we do that, we're gonna get 235.86586 AMUs. And now if we take the difference between these two numbers, notice our products do weigh just a little tiny bit less then our reactants, that difference in mass is the mass defect. And again, this looks small, but again, a little bit of mass turns into a whole lot of energy. We use Einstein's lovely equation there. So in this case, your mass defect is going to come out to points 0 0.18673 AMUs. And now we need to convert this into kilograms. And so again, I gave you that conversion on the study guide there. 
So, and we'll use it here. So in this case, we'll take 1 AMU is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And from here we'll go, so multiply our 0 0.18673 times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27, and we're gonna get 3.118. I'll round it to there. Three point, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll do five decimal places. We'll just keep those decimal places like we've been doing. So 3.118839 times 10 to the negative 28. Kilograms. And again, that's not going to seem like a very big number. So, but when we start kind of putting this in context, it'll start seeming a little bigger. And so that's what we're going to plug into equals MC squared. So we're going to have E equals, and that's our 3.11839 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms times 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared. Now, word to the wise, the most common mathematical mistake I see students making on this lesson is they forget to square it. They get all the numbers right, they get the hard part right, and they just forget to hit the square sign in their calculator. So don't forget that here. So, and again, times three times 10 to the eighth squared is gonna get us 2.8. And let's take this out to five decimal places as well. Two point eight zero six five five times ten to the negative eleven joules. Cool. And again, that should still seem pretty small. That's point oh 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 two eight zero six five five joules. That's a tiny amount of joules. But again, this is for just a single uranium atom undergoing nuclear fission here. So again, we're not doing this with just one or two atoms. Again, let's just do it with a whole mole of atoms for a second. If we did this with a whole mole of atoms, well, a whole mole of atoms would weigh 235 grams. So 235 grams is just a little bit sitting in the palm of your hand. It's not a huge amount. It's less than a kilogram of fissionable material. But even with that 235 grams, this is for one atom. If we want to see what this would be for two atoms, you'd multiply by two. What if it was three atoms? Multiply by three. What if it's a whole mole of atoms? Well, then you'd multiply by Avogadro's number. Now, when we do this for a single nucleus, we often look at this and say this is joules per single nucleon. Oh, no, no, not... Let's go joules per nucleus. Let's get this right. So joules per nucleus, but we could also look at it in joules per mole and we'll just multiply by Avogadro's number to figure out what that is. So times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And we get a very large number. So 1.69010 times 10 to the 13th joules per mole. So huge, huge, huge amount of energy. We're talking more than a trillion, more than 10 trillion joules. It is a, an astronomical amount of energy from just a little bit of uranium that could sit in the palm of your hand. It is crazy the amount of energy given off in these nuclear processes. But this is why we can go through all the process of mining uranium and purifying it with centrifugation and shipping it to a nuclear reactor site and still for it to be profitable to produce this energy. But if we could do this with nuclear fusion as well in some sort of fusion reactor, you know, it'd be much easier to get the hydrogen and, you know, get access to it. It's not, you know, radioactive by nature and stuff like that. So it's easier to handle. It would be a boon. So for cheap, plentiful energy for the world. Cool. But this is our calculation. This is what you're on the hook for. So on something like this, and again, this might be pushing it just a little bit of what you're likely to see in your high school class. But for some of your, uh, for some of you, you're going to have an ambitious high school teacher. I want to make sure you knew how to do this. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems on nuclear chemistry, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.